magnify the Lord. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've come to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remain standing. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Amen. Many, 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 many requests you see on the board. Um, and uh, we just need to ask God to really help our church family, individual families, uh, our nation. I had a conversation with someone at the very beginning of, of the service, and um, I said our, church, our nation needs, uh, it needs a revival. It needs an awakening. Amen. We need it in our family. So let's, let's pray. Many, many requests. Uh, many have been sick and, and different things, some affected, and... Um, so let's, let's take all these needs. You see them on the board. Let's take them before the throne of grace right now. Mighty God in heaven, Lord, I thank you for touching God. Hallelujah, every, everyone here today, God. I pray, Lord, the power of the Holy Ghost would fall in our service this morning. Lord, we pray, God, we give you glory. I give you honor, God, let your presence and power, your feel, Lord, your spirit move in this house. Today, I thank you for everyone that's here. We're praying for God, Stephanie and Jonathan today. Touch them, help them, God. Hallelujah, the Jacksons, I pray. Lord, Sister Russo, God, we're praying for the Snyder family, God, that you would continue to uplift them, help them, God, in their hour, their time of need. I pray, God, strengthen them, comfort them. Lord, I thank you for mercy and grace, the power of the Holy Ghost, God, in our heart, in our life. We're praying, Lord, for America. We're praying, God, for America that it would turn its eyes towards you, God. I'm praying, Lord, for every family in this house, Lord, that you would speak, God, to every heart and every life. God, awake us, Lord, to the hour and the day in which we live. Lord, I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost I feel right now, Lord. I thank you, mighty God. Lord, we give you glory and we give you you honor today. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, come on. Give God praise. Come on. Lift your voice. Lift your hands and give the Lord of glory praise today. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. 
Oh, hallelujah. Come on, entertain the presence of the Lord right now. Lift your voice. Lift your hands. Magnify the King of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, don't you feel the presence of the Lord here today? Hallelujah. You may be seated, calling for the ushers right now. Is that it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. We are, this is our Sunday school offering. Amen. Our tithes and general offering will be taken up later in the second half, but now is our opportunity to bless our Sunday school. Amen. We're thankful. We're thankful for our children. Amen. And uh, thanking God for keeping his hand upon them. Lord, we're so thankful for this opportunity to give and bless our Sunday school, Lord, and our youth, our hyphen, our power hour, Lord, our nursery, God, and our toddler class. I'm thanking you, God, for mercy and grace. Thank you for helping us bless this Sunday school offering and this adult class today, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> Thank you for, for being here, and uh, uh, felt it would be good to have everyone out here today, for the King, for a variety of reasons, but it, uh, the Lord has put something on my heart, I believe, for us today, amen. Uh, just a couple things of announcements. Wednesday night Bible study, you will want to be here for that. Uh, and, uh, oh, what else? Everything. Tonight, you will want to tune in online, um, as I mentioned in the one call, uh, at 5.30, our, uh, those who are young at heart, and for our children, we will have a, a online uh, thing for them. For our children at 5.30 and then at 6, you want to hear Wayne Huntley. will be our online speaker today and uh, on stretching for the supernatural. Powerful, powerful, uh, powerful word of the Lord. I preached it because of the times. It'll be a good one to you to tune in on. Hallelujah. All right, have your Bibles. Turn with me to the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 11 verses 9 through 12. Amen. Thank you for being, thank you for, oh yes, all the, all the things that we're doing today. Thank you for that. I won't belabor any of those points, but we're just thankful that everybody's here. Continue to pray. We've got a lot of things to pray for. Can I get a witness? Amen. amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't, say wait on me or look on the screen behind me. <laughs> All right, and the, and the captains over hundreds did all, did according to all the things that Joadiah the priest commanded, and they took every man his men that were to come in on the Sabbath, and with them that should go out on the Sabbath, and came to Joadiah the priest. 
And to the captains over hundreds did the priests give King David spears and shields that were in the temple of the Lord. And the guard stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, around about the king. From the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple, along by the altar and the temple. And he brought forth the king's son, put the crown upon him and gave him the testimony. And they made him king, anointed him, and they clapped their hands and said, God save the king. Amen. Our lesson this morning I've entitled, The Temple Guard. The Temple Guard. Amen. When we look at 1 Chronicles 26, 12, and 32, and you don't need to turn there, but maybe you can put it into your, into your memory bank to maybe read as a, as a, a way of, of, of homework. It describes in detail the, the command of God to the Levites and to the priest that they were to protect the temple of God. Doing some, some history on this and some study, uh, it, they said that the, the priestly guard was a, had strict watch over the temple. It was, had to be maintained. Uh, the guard being composed of three priests and 21 Levites. The priests were stationed at, at, at one corner of the flame. Maybe you can get that uh, picture uh, of the temple to give you, this is a picture of Solomon's temple if they're able to pull it up. It gives you just a little bit more of a visual that what was required by, by the Levites and, and those who are the temple guard. They had priests stationed at the chamber of the flame. They had one at the chamber of the hearth, one at the chamber of the attic and the, the mount enclosure, one uh, at each of the five important gates of the court. They had, they had men stationed at each of the four corners within the court and one at the chamber of sacrifice, and one at the chamber of the curtains, and, and then one behind even the holiest of holies. The captain of the guard, he, the one in charge of all of those men, he saw that every man was alert. And, and alert, and, and they would chasten the priest if he was found asleep. This is where maybe we get, you know, if you're on, car, on the guard duty and you're, 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 you're found asleep at guard duty, you're in, in derelict of duty and even subject to court martial, even in today's standard. And, and even back then, they were, if the priest found one asleep at his post, it is said that sometimes even punishing him, listen, by burning his shirt upon him. Wow. Amen. It was, it was a warning to others that this is of the utmost importance. You can see by this uh, a drawing of perhaps uh, what Solomon's temple would look like. You can see all the different entrances and things that had to be protected. And it was the importance of guarding the temple. These Levites were given a profound duty of protecting the most sacred of all Jewish structures. It was the temple, the place where God's presence dwelt. While on duty, there was no place to rest. There was no place to sit. Perhaps maybe they could, there was a fire at certain points during cold months to warm their hands and feet, but they were to be alert. They had to pay attention. They had to be on guard at all times. The protectors of the most sacred things of God. They protected the Shekinah glory of Almighty God and, and the things of God. And they were to guard these with all diligence. It wasn't haphazardly. It wasn't, oh, it's okay if I do it today and not tomorrow. Or maybe I, 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 can, I can be doing something else. Maybe I can just be on my phone and not be in whatever. You understand what I'm saying. Whatever they had to occupy their mind. But they had to be a due diligence. It was not uh, just nonchalantly, but, but it was with all alertness. It was with all 
perseverance. Hear me this morning. Amen. They had to stay alert. It was without slumber. It was out without sleep. They had to stay focused. They had to guard the temple. Can I say at the point of this message this morning that we who are commanded of God must at all cost preserve and with utmost diligence be the guardian of the temple. The guardian of the temple. You have to guard your temple. Turn to your neighbor and tell them emphatically, be a guardian. Oh, you can do better than that. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you've got to be a guardian. It was when Solomon dedicated the temple. Notice his dedication prayer. I want you to look at this. Notice the picture that's being painted before our eyes. Going to 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 1. And it says, when then said Solomon the Lord hath said that he would dwell in the dark thickness, thick darkness. But I have built a house of habitation for thee and a place for thy dwelling forever. Here is Solomon. He's praying this dedication prayer. And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. Could I ask you right now if you would stand? Would you stand? I want you to hear the rest of this, starting at verse 4. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build an house in, that my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there. I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, for as much as it was in thine heart to build an house for my name, thou didst well in that it was in thine heart. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son which shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house for my name. And the Lord thereof hath performed the word that he hath spoken for I am risen up in the room of my David, my father, and I am set on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And I have put, and in it have I put the ark wherein is the covenant of the Lord that is made with the children of Israel. And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and he spread forth his hands. I will not take time to read the rest. It is one of the most powerful prayers ever uttered. And God is asking that no matter, uh, he's asking God no matter what happens, no matter what they do, no how far they move away from you, God. This is Solomon's prayer. He says, if they will lift their voice, if they will pray, if they will pray with humble heart, Solomon is asking God, whether it's the children of Israel, whether it's a stranger in the land, whether it's anybody, if they come into the house of God and they have humble heart and they humble themselves and lift their hands in the house of of the God and lift their voice and pray. He is asking God, hear thou from heaven and answer their prayer. God answered the prayer of Solomon. He gave Solomon affirmation by filling the temple with his presence and his power and his glory. Hallelujah. 
Notice this, 2 Chronicles 7, 1, and when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven, consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter to the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when the children of Israel saw the fire came down in the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement. And they worshipped and they praised the Lord, saying, For he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, will you repeat with me right now? For he is good. Come on, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. One more time. For he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give God praise. Oh, mighty God. Oh, come on, lift your voice. Lift your heart. Give God praise this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. What a powerful, powerful passage. The power of raising your hands and calling upon God in his sanctuary. It was Solomon who built the temple of God. He built it according to the pattern that God had given him and his father David. It was the place where Almighty God chose to place his name. Wednesday we talked about the spirit of the Antichrist. Let me just say right here, anything that God has, the adversary wants it. Anything that is claimed as God in his throne, the adversary wants it. Not in my notes. This is your bonus round. God has chosen to place his name at Jerusalem. The United Nations, the one world government one day, will claim that as their, yeah, they already call it an international city. That's why there was so much uproar when our now President Trump moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. You see in the picture, anything that's of God, the devil wants. God has given you a temple, I'm getting ahead of myself, of the Holy Ghost. The devil wants it. <clears throat> it was on Mount, upon the mountain where David sacrificed to stop the plagues at Mount Moriah. It was the threshing floor of Orana, the place Abraham worshipped God and was willing to obey Almighty God. That temple that was built there denoted the place where God chose to dwell. The high priests and the Levites were to obey every commandment concerning the temple and its worship the types of sacrifices, how they were to be sacrificed, and it was, and what was permitted and what was not permitted. God was very specific. God is a God of detail. Let me interject this. So if you want specific prayers answered, then you pray specific prayers because specific prayers get specific answers. General prayers get general answers. <clears throat> Amen. So God, the requirements had to be followed each and every time without exception. Example, Levi 10 and 1, and Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took neither of them his censer, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put the incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. God's commandment was that the fire from the altar of sacrifice was the fire that was to be used throughout all of the temple. It was a place of sacrifice for all the fire from the altars in the holy place were taken from the fire at the altar of sacrifice. God declared what they brought was strange fire. It was foreign to God. It was unfamiliar with Almighty God. Why? Because it did not originate from the correct source. Young people, please hear me this morning. All right? The fire had to come from the altar of sacrifice. 
Almost all things are purged by the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, remission of sins. If there is no repentance, if there's no repentance, no godly sorrow. I contend, according to the word of God, it's not accepted of God. A lot of people in the world, they like to worship. God wants us to worship him in spirit and in, oh, there's a lot of people who do it in the, in the spirit. But God wants you and I to worship in the spirit and in the truth. The truth of who God is. The truth of one God, baptism in his name. In filling of the Holy Ghost, living a holy separate life. That's the truth. God wants to worship him in. Hallelujah. It was from the brazen altar of sacrifice that fuels the fire for the altar of incense and the censers. Those censers were canisters that were waved before the Lord as a sweet fragrance before him. There are so much types and shadows in the Old Testament. God does not accept sacrifice and prayer is not a sweet incense to him unless comes from the altar of sacrifice and the altar of repentance. Hence, the first piece of the furniture that when they entered into the presence of God, getting into the behind the veil, into the Shekinah glory and presence of God, it had to start, start with a time of repentance, cleansing ourselves to get into the very presence of God. Before we wave our praise to the Lord, we, and that's that sweet fragrance before him. It had to come from the brazen altar, that fire to light the golden candlestick, that fire, amen, and light. It all had to originate and come from the altar of sacrifice where the fire that fell from heaven was never to go out. You recall, God says, all right, here's what I'm going to do. In the tabernacle of the wilderness, fire came down from heaven and consumed the first sacrifice. And from then on, it was the opportunity and the job and the uh, ability of the priest to maintain the fire. Church, you and I have to maintain the fire of the Holy Ghost in our heart and our life. <laughs> Hallelujah, this morning, it's your personal altar. Hear me, young person. It's your personal altar that fuels the fire of the Holy Ghost in your heart and life. Your life's power with God, amen, and your life's power of an acceptable prayer life to God must never go out. It starts first with prayer and repentance. It starts with an altar in your life. It all starts... With prayer. Not just prayers or petitions of God. Give me, give me, give me. And those are good. We need specific prayers. And there's a time where we ask God to, to unveil and be able to help us meet our needs in the six circumstances that we are faced with. Amen. And it's not, but it should be perhaps, and I think it's the word of God and it is established that it should be first. God, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Before we get to the, God, give me, give me, give me. God wants a relationship with his people. The source in the beginning of daily walk with God comes from the prayer that originates in our hearts and life. The Lord commanded Moses, Leviticus 6.12. He said, the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it and he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. Church, hear me. In verse 13, and the fire shall be burning upon the altar. It shall never. Everybody say never. Everybody say never go. Say never go out. Church, hear me this morning. We cannot afford to let the fire of repentance be extinguished in our heart and life. We never can allow that fire, the passion, young person, 
We cannot allow the passion and the fire of the Holy Ghost to go out in our heart and life. Almighty God, the worship to Almighty God has to be born of nothing else than that which comes from an altar of prayer and sacrifice and repentance. That's why our musicians, that's why our praise singers pray before church. It's to make sure that the fire of the Holy Ghost is burning bright in them and through them. Because it's not about us. It's never about us. It's about Him. Our life must be right. Amen. That's why we, we ask God before church, God, Lord, am I right? Let everything be right within me. Our life has to be right with God. I don't want my prayers hindered. I don't want my worship to be hindered. So i got to find time to pray, get myself out of the way, and allow the power of the Holy Ghost to flow through me. I have got, you and I have to protect the thing that's most holy in our heart and life. Hear me this morning. You have to protect the greatest thing that's been given to you and I. And it's called the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost must be burning bright. It must be a towering inferno for a light that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Amen. And when you have the power of the Holy Ghost flowing through you, hallelujah, people look at you. They don't look at you as the flesh. They look at the fire that's flowing out of you. They should see the fire. They should see the, the aspects of God flowing through you. Amen. God declared in Leviticus 6.30, and no sin offering, whereas any of the blood is brought to the tabernacle of the congregation to reconcile within, with all in the holy place shall be eaten. It shall be burnt in the fire. Sin doesn't come into the holy place. It's consumed by the fire. Church, our lives must be consumed by the fire of repentance and the fire of the Holy Ghost. The Levites were commanded to protect the covenant. They were commanded to protect the ark of the covenant, that piece of furniture that was held in the holiest of holies. It was, it was that ark of the covenant. It was behind the veil. It, it represented the very presence and power of Almighty God. Here's what Deuteronomy 10, 8 says. And at the time, at that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless his name unto this day. The priest, the tribe of Levi, were to bear the ark. They were to hold it. They were to care for it. They were entrusted with it. And all that it represented... It was God's covenant with His creation. It was a way, uh, it, was, it was His way of, of the heavenly design for God, amen, creation, you read it, to minister unto Him. The Ark of the Covenant, we read the scripture, it said it, was, it would be to stand before the Lord to minister unto Him, to bless His name. Unto this day. Amen. It was a way in which they could minister to the Lord. God's creation is put here. You and I were put here to bless the name of the Lord. So all the way down to July the 12th, 2020, we don't worship him with a wooden box that's overlaid with gold where one man once a year goes in for the sins of the entire people. But the Bible declares we now boldly enter into the throne of grace. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace. We may obtain mercy and find grace. And help in the time of need, according to Hebrews. No, we worship Him with a clean heart. We worship God with a clean heart. And with the fruit of our lips, 
Isaiah said this in 13, 12, I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Speaking of the oracle of God, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophar. Ophar was a place where the finest of gold was to be received. Solomon received wedges of gold from the port of Ophar. Amen. And Isaiah is saying, your life should be uh, the finest. Amen. A man is going to be more precious than fine gold. Peter said this, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though he be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ. Our life, even though it's tried in the fire, All the trials and the situations that we go through and the battles that we fight, the things that we endure, amen, those things, according to this scripture, are to God more precious than gold. Why? Why is that? It's because when, hear me tonight, hear me today, when we endure, when we go through the trial, Going through the trial gives God praise. Hallelujah. When we go through trials, it gives Him honor. And the Lord glory. Paul writing to the Corinthian church in his first epistle to them. And I think he's saying to the Ironwood church, 1 Corinthians 13, 16. Hear me today. Know ye not that ye, you and I, are the temple of God. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Do you understand what Paul is trying to declare to you and I this morning? Amen. That we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The very temple of God. Hear me, young man. You, if you have the Holy Ghost, you are the temple of God. You've received the Holy Ghost speaking with us. You are the temple of God. You house the most powerful thing and greatest commodity ever given to mankind. And the Holy Ghost is the greatest thing this side of eternity. 1 Peter 2 and 5. Ye also... As lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You and I, church, you're a spiritual house. Let that sink in for a moment. You are the spiritual house of God. I really want you to get that point this morning. Yeah, God dwells in his spirits everywhere. We know that. His spirits were there where two or three are gathered and we're gathered in his name. He's there. He's here. But he's also right here. Right here. Right here. You and I are spiritual houses, lively stones, the rock that the builders rejected has become the head of the corner corner of the temple of your life wow think of that our hearts houses the greatest gift ever descending from heaven I've come this morning to tell you again, to reaffirm, to nail the nail in the wood and pound it and set it firm. And and that you and I house the greatest thing this side of heaven. And that you are a spiritual house. The lively stones, the Bible says. Peter said, the lively stones, the rock the builders rejected has become the head of the corner, the corner of the temple of our life. God is the cornerstone of our heart life. Our heart houses the greatest gift ever descended from heaven. The God, to God's creation, he has given us the power 
of the Holy Ghost and the infilling of God's Spirit, our hope of eternal, eternal life. The power, amen, that you possess is the power that's going to change your life. The essence of the Holy Ghost gives you the power to change it from mortal to immortality, from corruptible to incorruptible. Wow. Think of that. The Holy Ghost in you, the power of God who created the world lives right here in your temple of the Holy Ghost. Church, you're the vessel, the greatest thing, most powerful thing, the most blessed thing ever given to humanity. And when you receive the Holy Ghost, you house the very presence of God. The Spirit of God resides in your temple, your building, your personal temple is filled with the Holy Ghost, the very essence of the presence of God. Cole, can I tell you today, it's your down payment. Think of all the greatest experiences you've had in the Holy Ghost. The day you received the Holy Ghost. How powerful and wonderful and magnificent and glorious experience that you had when you received the Holy Ghost. And how powerful that was and is and is to come. Let me tell you that it is the down payment. It's the earnest of what God has for you. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. Think of that. The powerful essence of God. Ephesians 1 and 3, whom you have trusted. Ye also, after you've heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. You are the purchased possession of God. He has purchased you. He bought you. And when he bought you back through the blood and the work he did on Calvary, he said, you're precious to me, more precious than fine gold, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my spirit in you as a down payment of what I want you to become and where you can be someday. I don't know about you, but that gets me a little excited. Hallelujah. You are a royal priesthood. You are designed by God to house and to hold and to contain the greatest thing this side of eternity. And if we can acknowledge that, and that and acknowledge it's the truly the greatest thing ever given, then we must understand. Hear me this morning. I'm almost done. We must understand the total dynamic of its contents and understand the power that we possess. We have to understand the value. That's what is at our disposal. I wonder sometimes how much we value what God has given you. I think if we really understood the value of what we possess, we would do a whole lot more to keep it. God declared to Moses, you had the children of Israel, you encamp around those, take all those 12 tribes, those million plus people, and you bring them around the temple. You put three on the north, three tribes on the south, three tribes on the west. Three, you encircle that tabernacle in the wilderness. Why? Because it was to be protected. Solomon built the temple. He was instructed to place guards at the entranceways. He was there to protect it from outside thieves and robbers. And since the day of Pentecost, hear me, since the day of Pentecost, God has established that you and I are the temple guards of the soul's most prized possession. It's called the Holy Ghost. It is Christ in you, your hope and glory. He's given us the whole armor of God. He, he says, put on the salvation. You're the temple guard. 
Put on the helmet of salvation. Protect the mind. Protect what comes into your eyes and ears. Protect what you have because it is the basis of all actions. You've got to protect. Put on the temple. Put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the knowledge of truth, the mighty God in Christ. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Holy Ghost is essential. You need to put it on. Put on that breastplate of righteousness. You've got to have righteousness. You've got to be holy and acceptable to God. Put your loins covered with truth. Know the truth of the gospel. Let your feet be shod with peace. Everywhere you go if you have the Holy Ghost. Everywhere you go if you have the Holy Ghost. You should be bringing peace into the room. Peace in every conversation. Peace about what's going on in the world today. We're not the spirit of fear, but we bring peace knowing that our God is able. Amen. It, it, he's given us the sword of the spirit. It's the word of God. We fight the enemy of our soul. He gives us the shield of faith. Boy, that faith can move mountains. Why? Why did God give it to us? I'll tell you, because we're protectors of the temple. God, help us. To understand that we are the temple guard. We are protectors of the temple. We guard the temple. We are the temple guards every day, night and day, 24-7. We're being careful of what enters our temple. Young people, you need to check every credential. You need to sit like a guard... I won't be politically correct today. <clears throat> like some guards at some of our businesses checking you for certain things. I'll just leave that there anyway. Got to move on. We need to be diligent about what comes into our temple. We need to check the credentials. I'll go a step further. You need to be very careful of what you watch, what you put on your phone. And if we're not careful, that enemy slips in undisclosed and does havoc. Then little innocent lies here, a little deception here, a little dishonesty here, a little misleading of truth here, a little misdirection and misleading of truth, amen, to get people to believe something else. We know what that leads you to? It becomes a habitual liar. <clears throat> a little vulgar scene here. Through the eyes. Oh, it's not going to hurt me. I, 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 I'm not going to be affected. You know what mold does? A little mold turns into deadly mold. A little dis disobedience turns into a point of no return. Church, you've got to protect the temple. You've got to guard it with the most precious commodity you have. Amen. The enemy wants to sneak in like the Trojan horse and unleash an army to destroy your soul. 2 Corinthians 6, 16, and I'm winding down. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. God dwells in you. I will walk in them. God's walking in your temple. What's he going to find in your temple? Some things shouldn't be there. He's walking. He says, I will be their God. I'll be my people. The creator of all creation lives here. God lives here. You're his people. Think of that. Who God who created everything, you are his people. His spirit lives right here when you have the Holy Ghost. You're his dwelling place. He's put his spirit in. It's not a building of stone and brick and mortar. But he says, I put him in the fleshly tables of your heart. Say, I'm a defender today. Come on, you better. I'm a defender. When Athaliah, the mother of Hazai, saw her son was dead, she rose and destroyed all the royal seed. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, the sister of Hazariah, took Joash, the son of Hazariah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain, and they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber of Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And he was with her, hid in the house of the Lord six years. And Athaliah did reign over the land. It was Jehodiah the priest 
who gathered all who came in to offer sacrifice, and all those priests. He gave them spears and shields, and their job was to protect the king. Seven-year-old boy, Joash, they gathered all around him to protect him from the enemy so that he could rule as the rightful heir on the throne. This morning you have been drafted into the army of the Lord as the temple guard. And your job is to protect the king at all costs. God has put his spirit in your life. The almighty God of heaven says, I will reside in your temple and it's called the Holy Ghost. And God has declared this morning that you need to stand, watch, and you've got to protect the spirit of almighty God in your life. Your job is to protect the king at all costs. Protect the spirit of God that resides in your vessel. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, and I'm done. I want you to stand as we read. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. It was Solomon who prayed. He said, God, when I lift my hands with humble heart, I want you to hear our prayer. And when he did that, God answered the prayer, and his spirit filled that temple. I'm telling you this morning, you have the opportunity to be the temple guard and protect the most powerful thing, the spirit of God in your heart and life. Right now, I would love for you just to lift your hands and begin to talk to God. Be a protector of the temple. Come on, renew your, 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 your obligation and your opportunity to protect and serve and protect the king that lives in your heart and your life. Protect the spirit of Almighty God, the greatest possession that you've been given. Come on, you need to protect. You need to Renew your dedication to protect, uh, amen, the most sacred thing, the power of the Holy Ghost in your heart uh, and in your life. It's the Spirit of God in you. You're the temple. Guard the guardian of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God, for your spirit. Thank you, mighty God, for your power. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit that is in us. Help us today. Help every young person, every child. Lord, every saint of God, every mom and dad, every saint. Lord, let them understand. We're the temple guard, the guardians of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. That's it. Come on. Give God praise. Give him glory. Give him honor right now. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Take a moment. We're going to get ready and move into our next time of worship and the ministry of the word. Brother Waits will be ministering here in just a few moments. Say hello. Do a hallelujah howdy. God bless you. We'll see you in just a few moments. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash, no checkbook, no problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, 
secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash, no checkbook, no problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash, no checkbook, no problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash, no checkbook, no problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash, no checkbook, no problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, Set where you want to give and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash, no checkbook, no problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church.
Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash? No checkbook? No problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash? No checkbook? No problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash? No checkbook? No problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash? No checkbook? No problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash? No checkbook? No problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church.
Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash, no checkbook, no problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, come on. I think the Lord deserves a better, better hand clap. Come on. From the heart, Lord, I thank you. I magnify the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're calling for our ushers right now. Man, we're so thankful that we can give to the Lord. I'm telling you, you want to be blessed of God? Then bless the Lord. Amen. And if you give to God what He is, His portion that He has given to us. He, we're just stewards of God's blessings. And I'm telling you, He gives it. He, he, he just loads us with daily with benefits. He keeps us when, when things go slow, when we move, when we get laid off, God keeps us. God protects us, and I'm seeing it over and over and over. You can never outgive God. How many have found that to be true? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Lord, I thank you for, for this chance to give in our offering, Lord. God, for our, our, our missions and our Sunday school and, and, and our tithe and our offering, God, we give it to you. God, thank you for blessing it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ushers, go forth. Thankful for everybody tonight again. Mentioned that uh, uh, 530 are those who are young at heart and our children uh, have our power hour special. Have something for them at 530 online and then at 6 o'clock. You won't want to miss it, Brother Wayne Huntley. And if you are an aspiring minister, young minister, uh, you want to catch that video as well. It'll be a great time in the Lord at 6 o'clock. God bless you. Amen. We're going to go into a time of worship and praise. Amen. Thank you for all that you have done in our church and all those who are here today. Hallelujah. I thank God for everything that he's doing, keeping us, protecting us, blessing us. Hallelujah. Our praise team is going to come right now and worship. We thank all of those who are watching online. God bless you. Hallelujah. Sometimes I forget to just welcome you as well. And, but I want to say thank you for all those who are watching online who may be at home. God bless you. Amen. We're praying for you. And soon we'll hopefully be all together when this thing passes and we can worship God and give him all the glory and all the praise. One more time. Hallelujah. Can we give God praise? Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. We worship you, Lord. We give you glory and we give you honor. Hallelujah. That's it. Come on. Magnify the Lord a little bit. Give him glory. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord as our praise teams take it to the presence of God. It was a love. Thank you, mighty God. It was your love. It was your love.
changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone I know.
been so, so good to me. Pour out to breath, you will bring a life to me. You've been so, so kind to me. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You've been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life to me. You have been so, so kind to me. Thank you, mighty God. Lord, we love you. We give you glory. We give you honor today. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Glory to your wonderful name. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, mighty God. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So thankful. Amen. We had a little change of schedule. We're thankful for Brother Waits right now. He's going to come and minister the word of the Lord here tonight. Let's give him our undivided attention. Amen. And let's, let's envelop the presence of God that's in this place. Can we give Brother Waits a warm welcome as he comes and ministers the word of the Lord right now? Thank the Lord. It's great to be here this morning. Amen. The blessings of the Lord. Amen. God has been good to us. All of us. Amen. And uh, this year is... 
flying by so far. And uh, at work, we just had an election there in May. And uh, HR told me, he said, if you don't get back in, you're laid off work. So that's nice, isn't it? 15 years, and you're going to get laid off. Well, I wasn't really too concerned about it. <laughs> I said, I've done the best I can to represent these folks. And uh, I thought, well, I'll, I'll slide by and not have anybody run against me. Well, that was wrong. <laughs> and someone did, and I went and talked to the individual, and they said, well, the only, re the only reason I've done it is I promised somebody I would. I said, oh, okay, you kept your promise. I can say that much. And they said, we have no problem the way you handle stuff. I said, well, that's good. I said, this is not my position. This is a union position, and you have every right to run for it. And the election was held, and I, at one time, we had over 150 people on second shift, and now we're way down. But anyway, I got reelected by over 87%. So uh, I, I said, that's good for as long as I keep a second shift, I'll have a job <laughs> for at least another three years. And then June comes along, and uh, Trav and Morgan got married. And we're glad they're here this morning. And Morgan, welcome to Ironwood. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Ellie and Nora. And we love you, kids. And I told him I got some watermelon planted for him. <laughs> and it's not ready, but it is, it's coming along. And then, lo and behold, Tori and Caleb had another boy that was born July the 2nd. And uh, Cohen come along. And we're glad that he's here this morning also. Amen. And um, Tori needs some prayer, and uh, Andrea is home with her this morning, and uh, we know that God is able to do all things. And I don't want to leave my wife out either. She's been working hard for, on the everything, uh, and helping out with the grandchildren and doing some stuff for the wedding and everything. And uh, behind that, she tries to keep me in line. <laughs> Amen. If you would stand with me this morning, and uh, we're going to turn to the book of Mark, and I won't hold you too long, you young you kids, amen, but I believe I have a message here this morning. I called my brother the other day, and I call my mother quite often, and try, she's in her nursing home out in Iowa, try to keep her recognizing my voice, and every now and then we'll shoot out there to see her. But I called my brother, I said, uh, and talked to him. He said he hadn't been in to see mom since March because of the virus. And uh, he won't let nobody in, but he said, uh, I talked to him the other day. He said they are going to start letting people come in once a week. And he said, I'll be there to check on mom. But she's 96 years old. She sometimes uh, hears and recognizes my voice, and sometimes she doesn't. But, amen, I still try to keep in contact with her. So, young people, if your mother and father's around, keep in contact with them. You would appreciate it down the road. Mark chapter 2, and it may take me a little bit to go, but we'll get going here. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many people, oh, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. 
And they came unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they break it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto them, Sick of palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven of thee. Amen. You may be seated this morning. <clears throat> I'm going to title this this morning, and if you bear with me, we'll get going. And the title may not seem like much, but it will all, by the help of the Lord, fit together. And the title of this message this morning is A Setback. A Setback. A setback is a problem, a difficulty, an issue, a disappointment, a hindrance, a delay, a mishap. That's what a setback is. All of us in life have been dealt a setback one time or another. All of us, if you be honest with you, if you never had a, ever had a setback, then you must be someone great. We've all had them. A setback in life could be when one becomes sick. Car trouble. Have you ever been there? Walk out and you got a flat tire. You only got 10 minutes to get to work. A little setback, ain't it? Family problems. A loss of a job. We've all have experienced this in life as a setback. But we've all have made it through. And it's the same way spiritually. Every now and then you have a setback. But you know what? You can make it through. You prayed for this and God sent that. And you think, my Lord, what a setback. But we see in Mark 2, we read that there was a man that was sick. And four men carried him to where Jesus was at. Now, when they got there where Jesus was at, the scripture said that the house was full. And it was full of people. And he was preaching in there to them. And they thought within themselves, we've carried him this far and got him this close. And now we're faced with a setback. We can't get him into the house. So what are we going to do? We're going to just sit down and walk away and hope that when the master done, he comes out of the house and has mercy upon him. These men said there's not going to be a setback here. We're going to get him in to the house. We're going to get him in there some way and somehow. And then one of them came up with an idea. We'll go to the top of the house. Amen. And we'll begin to tear the roof apart. And we begin to tear the roof apart. And they said we'll drop the man down, let him down on the bed into the house where the Jesus is at. I'm here to tell you today, there may be some setbacks that come your way, but I'm here to tell you, don't wring your hands and walk away. Amen. God is still on the throne. Amen. You may have to break some things down and get into the inside, but you can make it. Setback. I'm mindful 
this morning of a man in the Old Testament. This man, by the name of Daniel, look at his life, Daniel, in chapter 1 in the book of Daniel, it starts out, he was taken captivity, captive, went in a, a strange land, had to learn a strange language. Daniel, yeah, there the king said, I, I want appointed them to, to eat the king's meat and drink the wine. Daniel and his friends. Daniel in verse 8 said he purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. With the king's meat, nor the wine. A setback. Taken into captivity, and now he's there. And the king said, here's a portion. And he said, no, I'm not going to eat it. Verse 9 lets us know that God had brought Daniel favor. Oh, here it begins to turn now. He found favor with them. And he said, if you just allow us to eat when we want, some vegetables and some water and so forth, everything will be all right. And he said, well, you know, the rest of these guys are going to be eating the king's meat. And he said, after 10 days, you could compare us together. And they did. And after the end of 10 days, the countenance appeared, appeared fairer and fatter in the flesh than all the children that did eat the king's meat. Let me stop right here and put this into you. If you never compromise, with the things of the world, God is going to bless you. Now, as you read on, the Bible lets us know that God gave Daniel knowledge and skill and learned the wisdom and Daniel had understanding of visions and dreams in verse 17. Verse 20, it lets us know in all the matter of wisdom and understanding. The king inquired of him. He found them ten times better than all the rest of the astrologers, soothsayers, and everything else. He said, I can rely upon Daniel. But then, let me tell you, a setback began to come. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He had a dream. And he wanted someone in all the land to tell him what that dream meant. He looked far and wide. Finally, he said, if you can't tell me, what the dream means. I'm going to kill all of them. I'm going to wipe them out. All these. And so. He said the astrologers. Soothsayers. Where are they? I want the interpretation of this dream. No one could tell Daniel what he dreamed. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar what he dreamed. And could not give the interpretation. Now. The decree was made. Daniel, you're part of it. You're about ready to lose your life if you can't tell him. What did we see in Daniel 2? The Bible lets us know. Amen. In, 13, in Daniel 2 and 13, the decree was signed. Daniel 17, verse 17 of chapter 2. Daniel said, hey, I'm going to make my way 
down to the house and I'm going to find uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I'm going to say, hey boys, your life was on the line too. And the Bible lets us know in verse 18, and here we go, amen, that they, amen, he, Daniel went down there and they said, desired, and he began to tell them boys, that they would desire the mercies of God, of heaven, concerning this secret. Amen, you know what Daniel began to do? He began to pray. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you boys better pray too. And they begin to pray, and they prayed, and they prayed. God of heaven, amen, give us this vision and dream that old Nebuchadnezzar had. Let me tell you something. When a setback comes your way, you are first thing you ought to do is pray to an almighty God. That's the first thing you need to do is pray. A setback comes my way. A sickness comes. I don't need to get on Wikipedia, amen, and Facebook and begin to search it out. But what I need to do is pray to an almighty God. Amen. Uh, Acts chapter 12, we see, amen, that Peter was in prison. And the Bible lets us know, amen, he was fa uh, fast asleep there. And there, all of a sudden, amen, the Bible lets us know that somewhere, somewhere, somehow, someone was praying for Peter. Oh, yeah. A setback? Yeah. I'm in prison house. And then all of a sudden, he made an angel came, smoked Peter on the side. He gets up out of there. And now where's the first place we find Peter going? He was going where they were gathered together, praying, praying. A setback comes your way. Amen. You need to seek the face of God. Matthew put it this way. That if two of you shall agree on earth as touching one thing, that it shall, that you shall ask, it shall be done for them. Amen. James put it this way. The effectual prayer of a righteous man accomplish much. Amen. Let me tell you something. When a saint of God, amen, is faced with a setback, amen, whatever it is, seek the face of God. Thank you, Brother Walker. Amen. Seek the face of God. Now, what did Daniel do after that? He gave us a three-point lesson here in Daniel chapter 2. The second thing, amen, that he did, amen, we find, amen, that Daniel did is in verse number 19 of Daniel 2. Amen. It says, and Daniel, bless the God of heaven. Daniel, bless the God of heaven. Amen. What do you do? He began to praise the Lord. He praised the Lord. Amen. Why? He stood before the old king and Nebuchadnezzar told him what his dream was. He interpreted that thing. Amen. After God answered with, uh, with prayer, he went and told him. And then Daniel began to praise God. And the scripture says, let the people praise God, uh, praise thee. Oh, God, let all the people praise thee. Come, amen, and praise him. Amen. Psalms 31, 34 and 1 said, I will bless the Lord at all times. All times. All times. When I'm faced with a setback, I'm still going to praise him. When I don't see how I'm going to 
get out of this mess. I'm still going to praise him. I'm going to praise him at all times. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. It gives us four reasons why we need to praise him. He says you're a chosen generation. Amen. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. Amen. And you are a peculiar people. Amen. Let me tell you, someone once said, I don't know if it's true, but he put it this way. He said, praise is rent due for the blessings that you already are living in. Does that make sense? Praise. Amen. Is rent due for the blessings that you're already living in. If that's the case, some of us, our rent is due. God has blessed us over and over again. And it's time to pay up and praise an almighty God. Praise him. Amen. Praise him is more than just a head nod and a head shake. It's more than just clapping your hands and waving your hands. Praise comes from way down deep inside. And you throw your head back and you say, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. That's praise when it comes from way down deep inside. Oh, hallelujah. The third thing that Daniel said that he did after that setback, he prayed, he praised, and then we see in verse chapter, uh, sing, uh, chapter 2 and verse 28, amen, he lets us know, but there's a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. Daniel, in other words, was telling old King Nebuchadnezzar, I had nothing to do with this. God revealed this to me. I'm the one, no glory at all, King Nebuchadnezzar. I want you to give God the God deserves it all. Daniel proclaimed it publicly. It was God in heaven who revealed this mystery to me. Let me tell you something today. Amen. If you've been faced with a setback and you've made it through, it's not because of who you are. It's not because the money that you have in the bank account. It's not because uh, uh, who you think you are and you graduated from this college or that college. It is be simply because God has brought you through. Amen. And God has blessed you. And God has taken you through. And that setback, amen, is no longer a setback because of an almighty God. Instead of you taking credit for it, why don't you give credit to credit is due to an almighty God? Amen. Proclaim it. Amen. Zechariah said, not by might nor power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. God has blessed us. Amen. And I'm getting ready to close. Daniel said you need to pray. You know why? Because you're not going to find the answer. At the, end, at the end of the bottle. 
You're not going to find the answer in the needle. You're not going to find the answer in the pill bottle. And then you need to pray. Pray and pray. Then you need to proclaim his great and mighty power. The psalmist put it this way as we stand. Chapter number 22. He put it this way. Verse 22. I will declare thy name unto my brother in the midst of the congregation. Will I praise thee? Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. Ye seeds of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All the seed of Israel. This morning, if you're faced with a setback, Come and find a place to praise the Lord. Come and pray. Come and exalt his name, proclaim his name among the brethren. This morning, if you need God, he is in our midst. Whatever you need of this morning, if you need salvation, God is here. If you're faced with a setback, don't leave. Turn it around. Turn it around. Get started on the right way before you leave here. These altars are open this morning. Come and find a place to pray. In one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship in one accord. Every praise. Hallelujah.
worship you. 